with you. What's what's happening for you? I hear you were trying to chime in mm. <laughs> through that sadness. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, like I stood there and just watched them ignore me. Mm. Like I felt them. Like, and I wondered, like, what do I need to do? What mm. did I need to do? Mm. What what do I need to change? Who do I need? To, who do I need to be? Mm. I made it, it was I made it about me. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so pause there. This is great. So now coming back to higher self, beautiful communication. Um, yeah. what as higher self, you know, as a wise like the wise man that you are, what would you love to offer unworthiness in this moment? Unworthy, thank you for naming that. Thank mm. you for naming what it really felt like to stand there and hold that mic and not even know what to say. Mm. Thank you for naming that you made it about you. Mm. I want to offer you remembering that why you do this work. Mm. You're doing it for your maybe your younger self, but in that room, there were people listening. Mm. And they were listening. They, they reflected on their paper about what they heard and what they saw and what they felt, and you reached the hearts of some of them. <laughs> You you were never meant to go in and put mm. put a goal of your reaching a hundred percent of those students. Mm. They don't know you. Mm. You did your best, mm. and your goals have to be clear when you go into those spaces. My name is Ashanti and welcome to the Taking Off The Mask podcast, where men get real. Men of all ages and backgrounds come together to discuss these masks we feel sometimes forced to wear. The front of the mask are the things that we gladly let people see about us and the back of the mask are the things that we don't talk much about. Maybe for yourself, think about what mask are you wearing today? What are the things that you're glad to share, glad to talk about, glad to let people know about you? And what's on the back of your mask? What are the things that you don't talk much about? What are the things that you avoid to talk about? What are the things that you may even have fear of talking about? Today's guest sharing his mask is Jamin Heppel. Jamin is the founding director and leadership coach at Mountains and Marathons. Mountains and Marathons. I mean, I don't know what your experience is climbing mountains or running or walking marathons, but let me just say as a one-time marathoner, <laughs> I ain't doing it again. <laughs> if you ask me, was I going to do it again? I would say no. But after this conversation today, here's what I do know. I do know that there are some next mountains in my life that I need to climb. There's some new terrain I need to cover. There's some new work that needs to be done. And Jamin in this conversation is not only sharing his mask, he does some beautiful work to support me with my mask. You know, these conversations are not like interviews. They're conversations. It's getting to know someone new in the world and Man, I'm so glad to have met Jamin. I want to tell you about a couple of things that took place in this conversation that I think is important to know. First of all, there's a process that happens in this conversation that blew my mind, that he helped walk me through. I'm wearing this visitor's badge from a school. Um, and the day before I had the conversation with Jamin, we had a workshop at a high school, 430 freshmen. I mean, a beautiful space, a beautiful auditorium. But I was, I left there not feeling so hot. Like I felt, I left there feeling like something was off. Like, like I had a lot of questions. There was a lot of internal doubt. I mean, it was the week before I was going to DC to receive this award, this award from the U S surgeon general. Like I come into a workshop and I did such a horrible, I, I feel like I did a horrible job. I'm trying to even like figure out how to like mask it right now. As I'm trying to say it, like, I feel like I did a horrible job. Let me just be clear. I was there on time. I was there an hour early. I was prepared. I had the technology set up. I had speakers. I had a microphone. I had all the materials I needed. And I felt like there was just an element in the space where the young people were distracted, <laughs> disconnected. And it's rightfully so. There, there's a lot to be disconnected from in this world. There's these freshmen this year, you imagine where they were two years, three years ago, they were in middle school. They, some of them lost a lot of their middle school experience. They have a, a very unique situation. They come into this high school. They were still trying to figure out how to be middle schoolers. 
man. And I, I could use a lot of logic to like analyze why it didn't go so well. But let me tell you deep down where I really felt. I felt not good enough, not smart enough, talented enough, not skilled enough. I'm like, how dare you think you're going to go to D.C. and get an award? Who who are you? <laughs> you can't even like get a room of 400 freshmen under like ability to pay attention. Like what's what? And I, all the self-talk, all the negative talking. If you have any negative talk, you know what I'm talking about. It was loud. And so as the workshop finishes up, I try and make a video at the end of workshop just to kind of reflect on how it went. And I was like, you know, hey, what's up, folks? The workshop, you know, and um, man, <laughs> I had a hard time like trying to like make it sound positive. Like, and maybe I'm always trying to sound positive. Maybe I'm, I default towards trying to be positive sometimes. And I don't leave room for frustration and anger and sadness and fear and all those things. I'm even in these conversations that I've had over 150 plus conversations with men from around the world. I am still a work in progress. Like it's still recordings that happen that show up. And so I made these three, two videos at the end. I made a uh, one with me just reflecting. And I, I remember in the video, just taking this huge deep breath, like, <sighs> like trying to like find the positive, the words positive out of it. And then I made a video on the outside of the school. I made a video with the principal, like just kind of like, and I was reading into all of his words, the things he said and didn't say, like I was reading into all his words. And then on the outside, I said, okay, you know, I'm going to make a new video. That last video was a little bit, it wasn't a positive energy enough. I got to pick myself up a little bit more. So I try and make another video on the outside. And that video sometimes feels like it was my best of the day, but it was still rough. I got, I want to like give you the positive always. And I know that that's not always the real. And in this process that Jamin took, took me through, some people call it parts work. It's also known as the internal family systems model, the ways of like navigating parts of ourself that are real. And how do we operate those parts of ourself from a not dominant place? Like if I am have navigating or dealing with anger, how do I not like live from anger? If I'm, if I'm dealing with some fear, not to live from fear, not to let fear be in the driving seat. If I'm dealing with sadness, like to let sadness have its space, but not to let it take over and be in control. And I think there's many moments in my life I can say that things have changed and transformed. This is one of them. And I hope you get something out of this. I hope that if you have not yet named the parts of yourself that you don't give acknowledgement to, that you do it soon. Because any emotion that you've been grappling over the last week, the last couple of days, whenever that you have ignored, maybe you just have time for it in the moment. You're in the busy moment of dealing with something. This emotion comes through you like, hey, I don't have time for this. Put it away. I'll deal with it later. Or maybe you write in your journal and say, hey, I, I got to think about these things. Or maybe you make room for it or maybe not. I have known myself to like deal with grief, sadness, worry and say, you know what? I don't have time for that right now. I, I don't have time to feel that right now. And I bottle it up. And guess what? Those things are going to come back. <laughs> Those parts of ourselves, they are going to get dealt with. And either you're going to deal with them intentionally or you're going to be forced to deal with them subconsciously. Because what's happening inside of us is that there are calls on our soul and our being to say, hey, I'm feeling this thing. Hey, I'm feeling this thing. Hey, I'm feeling this thing. And what we see with our young men in our work we see how they get so good at just bottling it all up. They're numbing. They're checking out to the world around them because all that matters is maybe I can just lock myself into this device. If I can just lock myself into this device. I remember at that workshop, the young people were on the front who do the volunteering and one young man had his phone out. He volunteered. He came up to the front of the room and he was on his phone. And I'm like, brother, you, do you know that you volunteered to be up here? Why are you on your phone? And sometimes it's like a disconnection from like what's in reality. Reality is that I'm standing in front of 400 of my peers. And also the reality is that, oh my goodness, maybe if I look down at this device, I don't have to be right here. Maybe, maybe I can check out from where I'm actually at. Maybe I can put myself in a new world. Maybe you've seen young people doing it. Maybe you've done it. Maybe you're walking down the street and you look up and you're like, what the heck? I just, they just passed where I'm going. Like you may have gotten yourself so wound up into whatever you were in. You pretended that there wasn't a world around you. And guess what? We see it all the time. There are people driving around in these big cars and trucks and SUVs and they're on their phones, like looking at the phone. They're looking at the phone more than they're looking at the road. You feel me getting excited? <laughs> like I'm just like, 
I'm constantly like like trying to like dodge people who are weaving and bobbing in traffic because they're trying to like they're so locked into this device that they don't recognize that there's other thousand pounds and multiple thousand pound vehicles running around them at 60, 70 miles an hour. They don't recognize that there's the other vehicles riding around the roads at 60, 70 miles an hour, and they are locked into a device that is going to get somebody hurt. And we constantly see it. I'm I'm only talking about traffic on a freeway. I'm talking about like our presence of where we are. And so this conversation is a powerful one. I really hope you share this with somebody. I hope that it inspires you to do some of your own parts work. He's going to walk me through the process. He's going to walk me through it. You're going to hear me do some work for myself. And I feel it coming back up again. I feel the sadness of that day popping up again. Like I'm in control right now. I'm like, I'm naming it. But as I name that feeling of feeling like not good enough, we're not careful and we don't do work to give ourselves acknowledgement that man, but I did give my best. Like my, the part of myself that like doesn't ever give me credit, he needs to be heard from because he's still in there. And I can do good about putting on a show and putting on a mask and saying, hey, how you doing, everybody? Everything's fine. But guess what? If we don't name name it for ourselves, then we're going to make it impossible for other people in our lives to name it. When our kids come to us with things that they're going through, our kids, our nephews, our friends, our family come to us with situations they're going through and we're so toxically positive, we tell them, oh, you're okay. You'll be fine. Don't worry. You, you can, you'll get through that. Maybe they will. But maybe they also just needed you to not tell them while they're trying to feel it so they can let some of the feeling out and let it get through it. But instead, they learn to stuff it. Stuff it. Stuff it. <sighs> Man. So listen, I just want to say thank you for being a part of this podcast. I invite you to be a part of the first million because we're going to get there. You can do that at millionmask.org. That website is going to be evolving this, this fall semester right now. We just hit fall so we are about to like expand that website. So we invite you to go ahead and make a mask now. So you will be able to see the before and after of how that site grows. If you have not like shared it with somebody who you care about, share it. Invite them to make a mask. Have a conversation with them about why it's so hard to take off these emotional masks. And I hope that in that conversation and in your ability to connect deeply with not only yourself, but the parts of yourself that you ignore, you deny that you repress I think we can come together a little bit more that we can care and love a little bit more I think our, our world needs it wherever you are in the world I hope that today's conversation inspires you to not do it alone maybe this is the beginning of that step for you thank you for being a part of the Taking Off the Mask podcast we appreciate you uh, we hope that this conversation inspires you to take care of you and to know that there's so much more to you than anybody can see by looking at you. Take care, folks. Bye now. Jamin Heppel, welcome to the Taking Off the Mask podcast. So good to have you, man. It's so good to be here, brother. Thank you, man. Well, look, as we get started, we just like you to let folks know um, how you want them to know you. What do you want them to know about you before we jump into these masks? Um, and I'll let you take it from here. Well, uh, Jamin... Grew up in Australia in a little country town of about 7,000 people. Eldest of three boys. Grew up in a very competitive household. The two key pillars that have kind of been core throughout my entire life have been leadership and sport. And um, yeah, and across the last five and a half years, I've been traveling the world and, uh, and building a transformational leadership development company called Mountains and Marathons that's really about inviting people into what it is for them to lead their most aligned and inspiring life. And so we do that by guiding people through transformational programs that graduate where our clients run a marathon or climb a mountain in different parts of the world. And so right now you find me in Guatemala, which is one of my favorite places. And um, yeah, man, open heart, open book, and just here to support people to look within and discern their own truth and then access courage to live congruent with that truth. Oh, we transformational leadership that's beautiful as a person who has done a marathon i i'm i would love to have some some emotional coaching in that category so <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean the physical was uh, was important but that was i wanted to quit every week yeah, preparing man. for that thing you know like 
<laughs> this is not fun. This is not fun. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I made a commitment. And so I'm excited to learn more about that and that process, or at least some of that process. But I also learned about you, like how you, how, how, how that came to you, how that, how that journey and the fact that you're in Guatemala, I'm, I feel my heart feels uh, connected because I, um, I got to visit there one time um, mm. and it was a beautiful experience. So mm. thank mm. you. Mm. Thank you beautiful, for naming that. As a guest, you get to decide who goes first. And so, you know, I'm, I'm finishing my mask right here, but you get to decide who goes first. Either you go first or I go first and whatever you choose is perfect. And that's how we kick off the, the mass conversation. Beautiful, man. Well, listen, um, yeah, given your depth and wealth of experience, I'd love to invite you to go first, man. Okay. Well, the mass today that I, uh, that I've been, um, trying to create this t- today is really interesting because I've been carrying a, a, a load today from, so the front is, hmm. Okay. So I, I'm going to hear, I've been really doing my best to like be present, like, you know, make it right before we start. Or sometimes if I come on the show and someone wants to make it live together. So I'm sometimes in a moment of like, okay, I'll, I'll make it live. Um, but um, it's um, today is an interesting one. So um, here's the mask that came out today. It's it's this uh, character, and you can't see the. It's like you can't see them talking. You can't see that there's a mouth there, but they really got a lot to say. Um, and they got shades because maybe sometimes looking in the eyes are not like. I don't want to look, I don't look people in the eyes right now sometimes, you know, but yeah. the words that I'm thinking about today, passionate, dedicated, caring. And I was going to stop at caring. And then I, I think I almost sometimes feel like I have to put hardworking mm-hmm. all the time. I don't know why that's a, mm-hmm. I could have just left it off. Like, mm-hmm. I, I think I show that a lot. I think it, it almost, it usually goes first. I read how working. Like I usually start with hardworking and I did, I do my best right to don't use a new word, use something different. Right. But I, I, I think people who know me or who really know me know that I, I work really hard. I, I don't like brag about working really hard. I just I'm always working, you know, I'm always doing stuff and I'm dedicated to this dream and to this mission. And like, I'm super caring. Like I, sometimes my baby, I, if, if you could care too much, I'm probably closer to that category, like caring too much about the world, about people, about society, about youth, about schools. Like, and sometimes I wish I, hmm, I wish I would say it that way. The words that were coming out of my mouth were, I wish I didn't care so much. And I don't know if I, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's actually true, but I think mm-hmm. because I, because I carry the burden of caring so much, I carry the, the weight other things I care about, it sometimes feels impossible to 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 be happy. So, I think um, that's what's really present. So that's the front, and that's what I actually really show. So, mm. <laughs> and I think that's why caring is on the front and hardworking, and sometimes feel like it has to be there. Mm. But I, I almost left it off. But I added so the four is only just because I was like something in me was like better write it, um, but. That's the front of the mask for me. Beautiful, man. Am I welcome to ask, like, inquire and ask a question about the front of your mask? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, man. It might even lead to, like, the back of the mask. Who knows? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm curious to learn more about your experience of the burden of caring so much because, mm. you know, I see you, I see you out there, public figure, you know, and really standing for boys and young men being more self-expressed, more liberated, more with a greater permission field to live into who they're most inspired to be in the world. And, you know, and, and like I feel the size of your heart and, you know, if you describe as like carrying, like the burden of caring so much, I'm curious to learn more about your lived experience of, yeah, what that, what that is for you and, and, and how that shows up for you. Yeah, beautiful question. Um, I mean, I think, so it started young. Like it, it started when I was young. I was at seven years old. I was the man of the house. Right. So my uncle was like, you got to take care of your mom and your sisters and your brother. Right. It was like, it was like, a, I was bestowed this, this shield of responsibility that I didn't even, I mean, I was seven. I was like still trying to figure out what it meant to be a boy. And, and now mm-hmm. I'm supposed to be the man. And I, I ain't got no job. I ain't got no money. I ain't got nothing except a lot of responsibility. Right. I got to 
help my sister and my brother. I got to make sure I'm taking care of my brother has just been born. So I'm like, you know, whatever you need, that diaper bag, the mix formula, the blah, 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 the food, the meat, like the bottles, the, I mean, I, I knew how to take care of a house, you know, I knew how to, like, I was, I was, I was kind of taking care of the house where my mom was working and I had to take care of my siblings. Right. So I was, I was raising kids before I even know how to create a kid. I didn't even know how to make a kid. You know what I'm saying? Like I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? So like, I think deep down, like I it started as a responsibility. It wasn't like I had an option. I didn't, I didn't, I, it wasn't like I got an option in that. And I think because growing up in that, it's, I think it just carried through. And so like when I went to become an engineer, I wanted to be rich. So it was about, mm. I get to be free. I left mm. house at I graduated at 17 years old, went to college. Mm. I got to get to focus on myself. I get to graduate, start making money. And then this teaching thing calls me, right? Like, no, <laughs> no. Like I ran, I ran for two years. I ran. I was <laughs> like, I don't know what this voice shut up, you know, like this mm. calling on your heart that you should be doing this thing. And I'm like, teachers don't make money. Teachers don't get to live the lifestyle. I, I, I get to live as an engineer. What are you talking about? Like, and it's this internal conversation that you can sometimes say, I'm going to ignore this voice, but sometimes that voice is loud and it's like, keep, keep going. Oh, well, you, okay, go ahead. And I think it wasn't, it was a calling deeper than that. So then I could, I couldn't ignore it. I tried. I really tried. I even changed jobs, made more <laughs> money, like thinking yeah. that it was going to drown out that voice. Yep. And it wasn't, it wasn't enough. And so I think deep down, I think the roots are like, it's in me. It's, it's, it's my, 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 my existence, I hope will, Provide others with the opportunity, young people, mm -hmm. communities, people who are trying to figure out: Do I want to leave this career or not? That that we sometimes we have to make sacrifices, and I and I I don't I don't ask for anything for making sacrifices. I know that it, it's, it was my choice, mm -hmm. but I look back and I'm I'm totally thankful for it. And I think sometimes it feels just like in this work today, you know, what we see in our schools, what we see in our communities, it's just like. Like I can't just watch. Like I, I have to be careful of my social media consumption because there's a lot of chaos that you that like, gets shown, you know. So, and I'm like, what is going on? And I'm like, there's a school like in the middle of Midwest, and I'm like, some kid gets bullied or something. And I'm like, I should call that school and see if they need some help, you know? Like, like uh, Ajanti, relax, be like, slow down, slow down, right? Th there's gonna be an unlimited amount of number of schools where these things are happening that show up on some kind of news feed, and so I think sometimes I have to just like. Just take 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 confidence and and rest mm -hmm. in the moment mm -hmm. of like giving the best I can right here while still dreaming big. It doesn't mean I can't dream big to Im impact more and more, but I I need to like not think that by not impacting more and more, I'm not doing a good job right now. I think that's where I have to kind of get careful about. Mm, nice man. Well, I suppose that my follow up question is: Do you think it's possible to care so much and not carry a burden? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think, I, I believe it is. I, I think, I mean, there's plenty of examples in history of people. I mean, I think when I read people's autobiography, I've read a lot of autobiographies of uh, people who are change makers, who are activists, and they talk about it behind the scenes, right? Mm -hmm. They talk about like, they're getting the death threats and mm -hmm. being like passionate about helping people, but also behind the scenes, the stuff that no one sees them carry. Mm -hmm. So I think that I wonder I wonder, I wonder if that's actually, when I say I am, my first answer was yes, I think it's possible. But as I've read the stories of many people who have done changes in the world, Gandhi, like carrying a burden of the, of the people because you care. So I don't know if the, I don't know if anything is wrong with a burden. I mean, maybe the word, I got to look at the definition of burden, but mm. I don't, I don't feel bad about what I'm doing. Mm. I think sometimes I feel like I can't do enough. That's that's where the burden comes from. That burden is not that I don't want to be doing it. It's more like, am I making a difference at all? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like uh -huh. I'm, I'm I'm working so hard, and I feel like I'm the impact is not big enough, fast enough. I think that's where I feel the burden comes from. I don't. That's where I call the burden. It's like not that I don't want to be doing this. That's, that's not where I'm holding it. I'm not holding it from that angle. I'm holding it from the angle of like, man, I've been at this for 20 years and man, there's still so much to do, yeah. right? And so I think yeah. that's the the, par the part where I feel the, and maybe the burden word is probably a better word out there for it, but I think maybe it's like, like it, if I think about the back, it's the, probably the words that are coming up on the back, right? Am I am I good enough at this? Am I, do I have enough skills to, to really achieve the dream that I've put out that I think has been given to me? 
So I think those are some things that are there too. Mm, mm, beautiful. Thanks for sharing, man. And it's a it's a be- you know it's a beautiful inquiry. And I you know I even love how when you mentioned Gandhi just then, you know I think uh, I can only imagine what he navigated and had to be with and hold as he was driving this movement. And you know the quote that always comes through for me with Gandhi is "Be the change you wish to see in the world." He didn't say he didn't say do the change you wish to see in the world. He said be the change. And something really resonant, like deeply resonates for me about that because I do see I see people who are so passionate about driving change in this world that they do 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 and put a tremendous amount of pressure on themselves and then ultimately are edging closer and closer to burnout in mm-hmm. service. And I know that path deeply because of the journey I went on in my mid-20s in service to my community. And then ultimately, I came to a place where I was working so hard in service to my community, building you know the Man Cave and another organization called Game Changers, where I hit burnout, I had a massive breakdown, and I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, whoa, like even though I'm aspiring and working so hard to be a positive role model and, and innovate and create change in my communities, I wouldn't want anybody to be like me right now because I was so burnt out. And then that was when I had this, like, when I had the revelation of like, whoa, it's not all about what I do. So much of it is how I be and how I experience myself on the daily and how I'm showing up on the daily. Is that congruent with the energy of the vision that I want to live into and that I want to see in the world? And then what does it look like to consistently live from that place such that I can sustainably be a stand for what I want to create more of in the world? So, yeah, man, that's kind of what was coming through as you were sharing. Yeah. Oof. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Thank you for the question. Thank you for asking. Yeah, that was beautiful. I hadn't even thought of that deeply of it or into it, but I, th- I appreciate that. Yeah, you got it, brother. Of course. Okay, we're going to be doing a lot of deep breaths in this in this conversation. I can feel already. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> and we're just on the Let's front. Go. We're just on the front. We're just on half of the front. We- <laughs> <laughs> love a good deep breath man love a good deep breath <laughs> slow down oh, slow. Man, okay all right it's on you it's on front you're on the front time right now <laughs> okay my turn on the front okay all righty okay oh, so um man. so here's my here's my work my art nice. you'll see here. i love wearing my cowboy hat so i've addressed it with the yeah. cowboy hat the three words and emojis that embody uh, what I love to show the world is my warmth, my groundedness, and my inspiration. So warm, grounded, and inspired. And where this stems from is in, inside my own inquiry of like the world that I want to see and the kind of change that I want to drive in the world. And, you know, really building upon what I was just speaking into as far as beingness versus doingness is I'm like, be warm, like be warm, be compassionate, be open, be loving, be grounded, you know, be centered, be here, be present, be available, and then be inspired. In other words, be lit up, be in touch with a greater vision, be, be in touch with a profound sense of possibility and what we can change in this world. So these are the, these are the energies that I consciously embody on a day-to-day and very unapologetically be such a way that others feel that Mm. so when people are in my presence they have that transmission and so yeah and i and in in that i will often when people describe their experience of me it'll often include words or synonyms of those ways of being so um yeah man that's what i love to that that that's that's what i deliberately and consciously bring and show to the world something about when you said warm how you described it and then when you went to ground it 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 Something that rang out for me was this idea of if you operate that way from a grounded place, it may help where it doesn't feel overwhelming. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. I'm offering, I'm giving mm-hmm. from that place of, I know, all I, I know all I got is this. This is all I got in my bucket. I can't give more than this with my bucket. So I don't get to the place where I feel like out of desperation or out of, of out of like like out of emptiness that I'm giving more and more because I don't have any more to give. Like I'm giving it from here, like this place. I really like the way you describe that. 
Yeah, bingo, man, bingo. Because I guess my my lived experience of it is because I've I've experienced being loving and being inspired without the groundedness. Mm-hmm. I've been that, and I would and I'd say that like those two ways of being without the groundedness has been a contributor to burnout, and also been a contributor to being like the uber positive, always seeing the silver lining, you know, positive mm-hmm. reframing, like that whole world of, of of coaching and personal growth and personal development but uh, over time as i've matured and moved through my own like challenges and initiations have recognized that that communication and that transmission without the backbone without yeah. like two feet on the ground like hey yeah. like hey i got me and yeah. if required i got you and yeah. that's where i found like the the, the intentionality around cultivating a groundedness you know and a presence and a depth is really core to my being and what i believe men in particular need to be cultivating is that groundedness and depth inside of their you know their commitment to create profound change and and drive and drive things in the world beautiful oh man mm, thank you, you got it, thank man. you for that thank you for that i appreciate that and thank you for that that, that beautiful drawing with those elements that really was a uh, that was, that was great to watch, get to see. I'm on the back now. It's my turn on the back. Let's go. So I am, um, I, I'm, I'm like at a loss for words. I'm, I'm trying to think of, um, I, I, okay. Okay, let me, let me go here. Let me go here. I'm, I'm going to leave up. I'm, I'm going to do it the way I, my heart is telling me. So here are the mm. words. Worry mm. and self-doubt. The, wor- the worry sometimes comes from like, like this big dream that I've been given. That, that was that came to me right this million mask movement this vision of like helping people around the world the vision of like creating inspiration but also through opportunities for people to see that there's more to me than people can see like i can see it i can see i can see us getting to a million masks i can i can see people always ask what are you doing to get to a million i'm like i don't know i haven't like i don't i don't really i don't know i mean I've, uh, this is a number you know what i'm saying like like there's still there's more people to help out there. there's a billion people on the planet like that, that's there's still more like what, eight thousand more millions to possibly be able to help, right? So, but let me just get to that first. Can you slow down a little bit? Can you slow down? But before asking me how what I'm gonna do once I get to a million, because I haven't even got to a hundred thousand yet. You know what I mean? Like, let me. <laughs> and so I think that moment of like, kind of like, it comes sometimes from the outside these questions because I don't have an answer for it. I feel the tension of like not knowing an answer for that question. But when I think about like the worry of like. Like, how am I going to get there? Like, how am I going to get us there? Like, I know that I'm a hard worker. I don't know that I'm the best manager of other people. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're not a hard worker, I I mean, I've mentored young men for 20 years, more than that. But to say in the Forward Club, 20 years, I I know that work. But as adults, I sometimes, I'm not as, I'm not as a, Understanding. <laughs> I don't think I'm. A, I don't think I'm a good word. I don't think I'm as. Uh, uh, my empathy sometimes seems to be thin. You know, like you, you're an adult. Like I shouldn't really need to tell you that you should be somewhere on time. Like that. Like like the fact that I have to even think about telling you that makes me like, and I have to like bite my tongue on all sides because I'm like it's going to come out so sharp. Like I'm feeling like, and I don't feel like I often want to mentor adults. Like in, in that, in, in, a, in the real truest way of describing that, that came out right there. But this blank that's in the middle, the blank. Um, so yesterday I had a workshop, and and I don't. If, if I am like being honest about how I performed, I gave my best. Mm-hmm. But the way it was received with those four hundred and thirty freshmen in that auditorium, mm-hmm. I can see all the students who were talking and on their phones while I was talking. Mm-hmm. Like I can mm-hmm. see them in my mind right now. Mm-hmm. And I almost don't, and I, and I had to be careful not, because I know what I'll do. I'll f- hyper-focus on them and all the students who are here looking at me and listening to me, I'm like totally dismissing them. And I had to like keep fighting myself to like, to thank the ones who are paying attention mm. while I'm trying to like address the ones who are not and trying not to like, trying to be a powerful presence and professional and like not trying to like say, hey, teachers, can you help me over there? You know, like not one to ask for help. Like, mm. not sure what that, I know, well, I know where that comes from, but like that, <laughs> not one to ask for help. Like, 
teachers, don't you see those students back there just goofing or like they're talking loudly. And so then do I got to be like the mean, do I got to be a mean guy? Do I got to like raise my voice? Like, and and I had to, at some points I had to just stop in the moment of the talk yesterday. And I was like, Shanti, what are you going to do? Oh my goodness. Like, I'm really at the point of like, like, like I I was like, of all the presentations I've done, hundreds of them, Mm. this was one where I'm like, you ain't nobody. Mm. <laughs> like it was a, it was an easy moment to be like, if the self doubt that I already have that already, when I see myself in the mirror, the self that I talk to myself, it, it was easily pr- proved yesterday. And that, that part is sometimes challenging to, to accept, to like either I self perpetuated what I already sometimes, sometimes subconsciously believe even though many, many of my workshops go really, really well, I know that I have an unex- un- unreasonable expectation that everyone will be amazing, and and maybe it's, maybe it's an opportunity to just continue learning and testing myself. Right? Okay, Shanti, you mm. you've been good at this. You've done lots of these. There, a lot of them go well, but you still got a lot to learn. You still got a, more tools to add in your belt because. And yesterday was a test on that, and so. That that's what's really present. Like you know, I'm about to get this award um, ne- next on Monday, next week in DC, right? And I've been like, oh, do I deserve this thing? I, mean, I know I've been working hard. I know I've been wondering when the opportunities are going to come, and then also feeling like, do I deserve this thing? And then yesterday, like that workshop not going as well as I would hope is like, mm. yeah, you. <laughs> it's almost it's like that, I, and I know what I'm doing. I know what my do what I'm doing subconsciously. I, I I'm 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 proving to myself what I'm somehow thinking behind the mask that I have, that I wear on a regular basis as a leader, as a social entrepreneur. So that's really present for me today that, that it just happened yesterday. So I'm, I'm still carrying it. It was yesterday at this time. Yeah. Yesterday at this time I was standing in front of the audience (laughs) and like, (laughs) (laughs) Oh yeah. (laughs) Less than 24 hours ago. Oh my God. God, man. Yeah. Brilliant, man. Brilliant. Well, in this moment, I'd love to invite a nice deep breath because I can still feel the, the 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 process you're moving through coming off the back of that. Man. So, oof, yeah, slow it down. <sighs> yeah. Nice. For real. For real. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, man. Just like bringing me so intimately into your like lived experience and like, and just like, yeah, the back end of what it is to be standing for, you know, such a big movement and just like some of the, the really personal parts, the vulnerable parts of what it is to like stand up the front and be that leader driving the change. I, I guess the one thing I'm curious about is, you know, inevitably, there are going to be experiences like this. Inevitably, you are going to be up the front and you're going to have students who are disengaged. And whether that's you or whether that's just the culture of the school, like whatever it is, what I'm most curious about is what's your process recovering from that, like rebounding from that? Because what I know for sure is you are going to go and hold a microphone and stand in front of students again. Like yesterday hasn't wiped you out. So I'm curious about like what the, yeah, what your, what your resilience process is or recovery rebound process is off the back of an experience like yesterday. Like in the moment when I was standing there, I was like, I had like, you know, I, I would replay, I play out many scenarios. Should I like become the, the mean speaker who is like, what are you doing? Like, why are you not paying attention? Like, do I become that? Do I, uh-huh. do I like, um, do I say, okay, Let's take out all the students who don't want to really learn and let's focus on the ones who do. I mean, I, I made like all our scenarios and I, and I basically just held there and I said, Hey folks, you know, like I really, and I just talked to the ones who were listening. I said, let me just say these words. I'm not even gonna try and tell people to stop talking right now. Cause they're, they're not hearing me, but those who are listening to me. And I, in the moment I was like, what, what do I need to do for, uh, for the students who are like really listening, who really are getting something. Mm. And so I just, I had a message for them. Like, mm. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sad that there are people who are trying to take away your opportunity to learn something today. I'm, I'm really, I feel my heart is is hurting for them that, that I'm here out of a place of care and love and mm-hmm. they're not able to receive care and love. And I don't want to turn into a tyrant and turn into a person who has to yell and scream and get people's attention. That's not mm-hmm. what I'm here for. And so for those mm-hmm. of you that are listening, thank you. 
And I just, Mm -hmm. and I came back to a place of why is this important to me? Mm -hmm. Like, is it important for me? Is it deeply important for me that every student I speak to gets it? Well, that would be an aspirational goal. But what I know I am is I'm like the parable of the sower, right? I'm just planting seeds. And some seeds are just going to hit ground that's not ready. And some seeds is going to hit ground that's going to be stuck in clay. It's going to grow a little bit. But all I can do is plant. I'm not, I don't know how to grow a plant. I don't know how to grow a life. I don't know how to, gr- I don't, I can't make somebody transform their life. Mm-hmm. I can only say, hey, I've been through tough stuff. I don't know if you have. I know what it feels like to sometimes feel stuck. I know what it feels like to be like, feel alone. I know it's like to feel like, how am I going to get an opportunity? And today may be your opportunity and maybe it's not. And so all I can do is just put the seeds out here and you do with them what you need to do with them. And I think when I, when I'm, when I'm operating from that place of clarity about the, the groundedness, when I play, if I operate from a place of groundedness about my mission in this work, Mm -hmm. then I know that it's, 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 it's law of averages <laughs> and I get, I'm gonna give my best, even though I would like to believe that every one of them would get it. And I think that that's not realistic. That's more of the, that's more of the doing, the doing, the doing, as opposed to how do I just be in this place? You know, like you said, how do I just be, I gave my best. I mean, that, that's what I, when I started, I said, I gave my best and I also have this other feeling. Cause I know if I don't get grounded and I gave my best mm-hmm. that I will easily get into like a lot of self, uh, unhealthy conversation to self. Yes. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm yes. my worst critic. Like I'm a, I'm my worst critic, you know, like, so I am clear that anything who says something negative about me, I've already said it's probably 10 times worse and louder and consistent. So when I read it, I'm like, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. Or I, you know, so I think that's what, um, I, I worked on and, and today I'm still working on it. Right. Like this morning I made a, I made an audio recording just to like, still keep processing it because I'm still processing it. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I take it, I take the work really serious, you know, but what I, what, what, let me say one last thing about this. I'll just say, cause I want to make sure I give you time to speak. Um, what I, when students did reflections yesterday, a student, a student did a reflection, like they didn't even turn it in. So at the end we had people do reflections, right? Cause I knew that I wasn't, people weren't able to reflect out loud. Somebody didn't even turn the reflection in. They left it in the seats. Right. So mm-hmm. they didn't even pass it in. Mm. This is the one that we found in the seats. It says, uh, it says there, let me see. It says very real felt like he was talking to me. He's pretty patient with us. Good voice, <laughs> loud voice gives insight as to how similar we all are. Eye opening. They didn't even turn it in. I mean, and I got goosebumps even reading again. So sometimes when I'm like trying to like reach a hundred percent, yeah, I need to like back off of that expectation of my own self. And that's old stuff. That's old recordings. That's not stuff that I created in myself. It's stuff that was created around me. And I try to survive in that world of like always doing everything and all the time and never taking a break and never. And so, and good enough, not it's not good enough. Do more. Right. So, I think that part of the doing versus being is really present right now. So, yeah, thanks for asking. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. And, you know, and it's just like, and it, it's that what I'm hearing here is part of your process is like being in the reflection, like giving space for the inner critic to like say the things, but then all, but then ultimately swinging it back to compassion and perspective. And, you know, even as I'm in touch with you showing up there and doing everything that you like, everything you could bring in your best. It's also acknowledging that like everyone, like the message will land when the, it's a, um, the student, the teacher will appear when the student is ready. And there were some students in that room yesterday. And then there yeah. were some people who weren't students ready to receive that message yesterday. Right. And so it's just trusting that consistency mm. over time is going to ultimately what has everyone received the message when they're ready to receive it. So celebrate. Celebrating you showing up regardless, man, because I know that you'll oh. continue to step on stages and you'll have other experiences like this and you'll move, you, you will rebound. Smaller self will have his say, inner critic will have his say, and then back <laughs> to compassion, higher self driving the charge, standing for the mission, and away yeah. you go. So honoring yeah. you, man. Thank you. Well, thank you for listening. Thanks for the, for the d- deeper re- question and reflection. I appreciate that. Of course, man. Okay. My turn.
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your turn. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> so this is the back of my mask. And so here we have uh, what I don't let the world see is my inner critic or my inner judge, which is very much what we we're just speaking about just now. Um, my little boy, in other words, my, my inner child, and then also my shame and my unworthiness. And so, yeah, it's interesting, man, because like similar to you, I like, I'm standing for a big mission. Um, I'm standing for the transformation of the planet. And uh, there are moments when I like, when I don't hit the mark in a way that, um, that, that, that I aspire to. And the inner critic can come in really heavy and hot. <laughs> and so that's, an, that's a dialogue that I will keep off social media. <laughs> like that's a, di that's a dialogue that I'll often, you know, unless there's like, um, you know, a brother right there rec receiving, like present to the, the density of my energy, um, yeah. it'll often be a, a very private process that I'll move through, you know, trying to create space <laughs> for my inner critic's voice to be heard. And, um, you know, and, and, and then, and then create, yeah, a, a dialogue of compassion and getting underneath, ah, what's at the source of this judgment? Where does that come from? Which then leads to my inner child. Typically, yeah. you know, something that happened from, but from, from childhood and, and, yeah. and, and, and shame threads into that as well. And even an example of this, that's like really present for me is like, um, my business partner, Jenny, and I were creating a new program um, at the moment called the Kilimanjaro Experience 2024. And so, it's a, trans it's a 10 day transformational journey where we invite leaders from around the world to come and step into a, a rite of passage initiation where we all climb Mount Kilimanjaro together in a very intentional and structured way where people can tune into what kind of transition of life am I in right now? What do I want to leave behind and what do I want to step into? And so we're creating, so we're creating this beautiful program and we ran a pilot this year, which was, it was a real, it was a real success, real celebration. And anyhow, part of the um, growth and expansion of this, of this program is inviting other coaches and thought leaders who are in the realm of transformation to come and be uh, leadership partners as part of this experience. Mm -hmm. And so I'm in this vulnerable place right now of like writing the list of like, the, the, the people that I would most love to co-journey with in this experience and then, you know, doing the reach out. <laughs> like, hey, you know, hey, brother, we met three years ago. Like, hey, you don't know who I am. Like, you know, just being and – then, and then just like trusting, <laughs> putting it out there and then like acknowledging the part – like in, in the invitation there is inherently a vulnerability because I might receive a no. In fact, I will probably receive no's. And so, or even worse, no response. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know? And then being in that tension and then like noticing, ah, oh, he said, he said no. And this was the tone that he used in his no. And like, what does that mean about me and how he respects me or doesn't respect me or, or no response at all? Okay. Like, what does that mean about? What does that mean about me? And then noticing that just the inner judge going, yeah, dude, like, cause you're like, you're not like, you're, you're not good enough at this or you're not well known enough or just all of that kind of like noise from small self. And then being able to be like, okay, let's just ground. <laughs> let's yeah. take a breath. Let's slow down. Okay. Nice. What am I noticing in my body right now? Oh, yeah. I'm noticing I'm a bit embarrassed. Ah. I'm noticing a bit of shame present. Okay, cool. What does embarrassment want to say right now? What does shame want to say right now? Ah, okay. Yeah, shame wants to say, yeah, dude, you shouldn't have done this in the first place. This was silly. This was never going to work. Ah, hey, is that shame or is that judgment? Ah, hey, judgment. <laughs> well, hey, let's just give space for shame to speak right now. Ah, I'm not good enough. Oof. Okay. Hey, little man. Hey, inner Jamin. Little Jay. What's going on for you? Ah, oh, just feeling a bit like rejected, actually. Just feeling a bit rejected. Oh, cool. Hey, little Jay. That's fair enough, man. I'll just put a pause there, but like part of my process then will be just like offering, like I might tune into, hey, Jay, man, when was the first time you experienced 
not being like being rejected and then like if i was to really go there right now it'd be like Yeah, I was, um, yeah, I recall this vividly. I was seven years old and there was a girl named Claire Enter. And I remember asking Claire during recess, um, if she would be my girlfriend. And I remember so clear, I remember she, and she was like, no, I'd never be your girlfriend. And then like little Jamin with his little vulnerable nervous system, just like felt the impact of that. And then, you know, suddenly a story of like, the girl I want doesn't go for me. And, you know, poof, there's the imprint, then there's the embarrassment. I'm just like, ha. Huh. So in this moment, now it's just like, hey, little Jay. Hey, brother, I got you, man. I got you. Okay. It's fair enough you're feeling that way, but I just want you to know, brother, like, I'm here. I got you, little man. I'm here and I'm not going anywhere. Okay. Yep. There are going to be moments in time when people say no to you. That's inevitable. That is going to happen. And when your experience of rejection shows up and like, and you feel like you feel like left out, all good, dude. I'm right here and I'm not going anywhere. Okay. I love you, man. I love you. <sighs> How are you feeling now, little Jay? Mm. Yeah, I feel, um, I feel taken care of. Yeah, man, you are. It's because you are beautiful. Does anyone else have anything else to say? Mr. Shame, how are you feeling? No, I feel heard and seen. Okay, fantastic. Awesome. Mr. Judgment? <laughs> hey, hey, thank you for being here, man. You always communicate with such intense penetration. I'm always clear on where you're at. Appreciate you showing up and communicating so we get to come together here right, and actually love and bring compassion and love to everything in my experience right now. Okay, so thank you for being here. Uh. You know, man, so it's just like these are the pieces, like even as I bring this forward, like this is part of my process when the vulnerability shows up. It's just like how do I give space for all of my experience to be welcome and so that none of my emotionality is suppressed or denied such that every bit of me has a chance to be loved and met with unconditional compassion um, and such that, yeah, I get to heal swiftly through moments of rejection and intense like an intensity yeah thanks for witnessing man i very rarely do that bear being bared witness to um in my in my process that was beautiful first of all thank you thank you for letting me witness it and thank you for mm. i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that for myself i think mm -hmm. it's i can feel even just watching you have that conversation i can feel the the healing, mm. Mm. the healing that can come through that mm. and the healing for others, permission to say, oh, if I just let them feel what they felt, what if I took time to not be in charge, to not have to have it all figured out, to not be the boss in the desk with the title and the responsibilities and the list of things. Like, what if I could just like acknowledge the pieces? And I, and I think even since yesterday, because I was trying to be analytical, I didn't. Yeah. 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 For real, for real, for real. Mm. <laughs> that was powerful, man. I'm, I don't have any words right now. I'm like, yeah. um, thank you. Thank yeah. you. You got it, brother. You got it. And, yeah. and, and if you're open to it, I guess, you know, cause as you can tell, like I've done, I, I've done a lot of reps with that, yeah. with that process and with that practice. So if, if you're yeah. open to it, I can just share just like a couple of simple principles that, yeah. that kind of like complement that, that kind of communication. Um, mm, yeah. And so, I mean, and, and like broad, just broadly speaking, this is called, um, it's, a, it's a, it's a version of, Internal family systems, IFS or parts work is often what it's called. And so it's a, it's a, it's a modality of, of healing and self inquiry. And yeah. principally, it acknowledges this idea that our egoic structure is made up of all of these different parts and potentially infinite parts. And part of the journey of part of the healing process is really allowing space or standing as higher self 
standing as like grounded leader. Um, in our case, you know, we want to even use the word of as like king, standing as king. How do we, how do we lead and hold space for all of these different parts of ourselves to have their moment of being brought into the conscious, being brought into the light in a safe, in a, in, in a safe internal space such that they can be heard, seen and express what's alive and present. And then no matter what is going on for the different parts of ourselves, being able to have it held, not judged, and then safely um, validated and just met with unconditional compassion and unconditional love so that (laughs) all parts get to grow up and mature and feel like liberated instead of, you know, the, the, you know, little Jamin or teenage Jamin, you know, who's been suppressed and hasn't had airtime for a while. If he's been suppressed and, and, and in the subconscious, then he is inevitably going to play out in unconscious ways in relationships. You know, he's just going to play up. He's going to play up. He's going to do something dumb. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, then, and, and, and then so it's just like, well, if, 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 if you know, teenage Jamin is actually given airtime, like inside dialogue, it's kind of like, huh, maybe it's like then he, then I can bring great, greater awareness of when teenage Jamin wants to play. <laughs> That's right. And so then it's just, so, right. then, so then King or higher self continues to ru- like continues to be in the driver's seat versus yeah. unconsciously teenage Jamin or oh. little Jamin coming to the, the forefront and, yeah. then dr- and driving the show. And so then we've got like, then we've got an inauthenticity. We've got a, you know, we've done something embarrassing, like done something that just didn't need to happen where we're like, oh, if I did life again, I'd do that differently. It's just like, mm. ah, that's because we weren't in King. We weren't in the driver's seat. But we had other parts of ourselves unconsciously driving the bus, and that's where we do immature, silly things that don't serve, like that don't serve ourselves or others or the collective. And so, this process is really about yeah, cultivating our capacity to hold awareness of all parts of ourselves, have them heard and seen, and then bring deeply compassionate energy and language to these different parts of ourselves, such that it's like, huh, all of me is welcome, and I don't. I don't need to sit inside this idea that I am broken or that there's something wrong with me or like, or like I need to improve because, because, because like where I'm at's not good enough. It's like, what if we just actually create space for all of it right now to be okay? And then from this place as king, make empowered choices on how we move forward from this moment. Oh, without a doubt. That is, I mean, that, that's, that's, I see not only this as a absolutely important part for me right now, like just even just after, after yesterday, just making some time to do this process from, from that place of like, like, I think I operate from the, well, I, yeah, just if I think about the modalities, like you talked about, I maybe staying in King so often, cause I'm always responsible for other things. I'm always got to be in charge and, and taking care of everybody and making sure everything's running smoothly or running as efficiently as possible that I don't leave room for the other sides. And I think that that is, it's, it's bringing up like all this, you know, it's one thing to have knowledge and one thing to put the knowledge to use. Right. Yeah, dude. It's yeah. like, Oh, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I, I do need to make room for, Everything that I felt yesterday through today, like still, mm. and I always try and override that. Like, and sometimes I just need people, like you know, like I don't. Sometimes I need men in my life who also make room for that, right? Who, like, oh, okay, like to like, like if, like if I, I mean, I'm on a men's team, so I, you know, I have men in my life, but I think I wouldn't have like. Go on to them and say, "Hey, I'm feeling this thing yesterday from yesterday, right? I'm I operate more sadly like a lone wolf, right? Yep. And so being able to like name that and know what I see in young people in our work, like who who do that thing too, mm. and I, I think it's easier to see it in others and really help. I'm I'm, I'm a you know I've been mentoring for a lot of years. I I can see it, and how do I make sure I see it in myself and also make room if, if I make room for them, which is, which they need." I need to go to the places where I get room made for me to like name all of those pieces too. So, man, I feel that. I feel this. I, man, man, 
Man. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so good. It's so good. If you're, if you're open to it, I'd love to, I'd, I'd love to just like help, just help you get started with this. Mm. Just if, if you'd yeah. be willing to, yeah, if we just yeah. slow down. Yeah, if we just slow down. Cool. Are you receptive if I just guide a simple process? Yeah, I am. I am. Cool, yeah. Man. Alrighty. Nice. Well, just to do this, oh, yes. Oh, man. So great. So just so, so drop the eyes down, settle into your chair and just begin. Nice deep breath in. Nice deep, filling the belly, filling the lungs, and then deep exhale, like where the exhale is longer than the inhale. Beautiful. You can do that again. Again, nice, like rich inhale. Yep, and let it go. Beautiful. Nice, just in this moment, allowing your breathing to come to a nice, easy, steady state and allowing yourself to become ever more present what's alive for you in this moment again really bring the intention to go slow go slow beautiful and so in this moment just inviting you now to like get in touch with king get in touch with higher self that one who holds wisdom that one who holds space that one who sees and has awareness and can really like love and bring unconditional compassion to others and to self Give me a nod when you're in that, like, beautiful. Okay. And so from here, man, just inviting you and speaking out loud from the place of King, just allow now just to go back to yesterday and just name, name these different pieces and parts of you that were like present. And if you need guidance as far as what might have shown up, just like let me know because I can bring language for it. But just, yeah, see if you can just like name a few different parts of you that were alive in yesterday's journey. Sadness. Mm. Shame. Mm. Feeling not enough. Like, mm. like, like unworthy. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Hey, great work, man. Great work. Cool. So we've got sadness. We've got shame. We've got unworthy. So just in this moment, like just inviting in a simple dialogue, like uh, in this moment, inviting you to step into sadness so like uh, embodying like sadness is like a, r- a real living part of you um yeah. let's just have a simple dialogue with, with with sadness now this is between sadness and higher self so if you just as higher self ask sadness hey sadness what's um what's going on for you right now hey sadness what's what's going on right now what's mm-hmm. happening well i am um, i'm watching all these students who I believe could benefit from these this word, this message, and they're missing it. Mm. Mm. They're missing it. Mm. Like I feel like they're they're not listening. Like, mm. like I think that yeah, the deeper sadness is that I can't make them hear it. I can't make mm. them hear it. They're like I know that. Some of them just need a shift in focus, and it hurts that I'm, I'm not. I think that's the other voice coming in of unworthy, right? Like unworthy is coming in. Like, yeah, cool, good. So move across. So, so now, thank, thank sadness. Hey, thanks so much for sharing, brother. Thanks so much yeah, for sharing. And thank then, hey, sadness. nice. And now over to unworthy. Hey, hey, unworthiness. Is there anything going on for you? Worthy, what's what's happening for you? I hear you were trying to chime in mm. <laughs> through that sadness. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, like I stood there and just watched them ignore me. Mm. Like I felt them. Like and I wondered like what do I need to do? What mm. did I need to do? Mm. What what do I need to change? Who do I need to, who do I need to be? Mm. I made it, it was I made it about me. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so pause there. This is great. So now coming back to higher self, beautiful communication. Um, yeah. what as higher self, you know, as a white like the wise man that you are, what would you love to offer unworthiness in this moment? Unworthy, thank you for naming that. Thank mm. you for naming what it really felt like to stand there and hold that mic and not even know what to say. Mm. Thank you for naming that you made it about you. Mm. I want to offer you remembering that why you do this work. 
Hmm. You're doing it for your maybe your younger self, but in that room, there were people listening. Hmm. And they were listening. They they reflected on their paper about what they heard and what they saw and what they felt, and you reached the hearts of some of them. <laughs> You you were never meant to go in and put put a goal of your reaching a hundred percent of those students. Mm. They don't know you. Mm. You did your best, mm. and your goals have to be clear when you go into those spaces. Nice, nice. yeah, beautiful. So now feel back, right? So now feel back into unworthiness and just go and just just like ask, ask unworthy. Hey, are you receiving this, and and what's present for you now? Unworthy, did you, um, are you receiving this? Did you, how are you doing now? Yeah, that, that makes so much sense. When I looked into the eyes of those students who were looking at me, I knew I had some of them. Mm. I, mm. I, I know that my expectation was probably unreasonable. <laughs> mm. My expectation was that I was looking at the ones who wasn't looking at me. <laughs> I was proving to myself what I sometimes deeply felt as opposed yeah. to knowing that there were so many of them that were with you. Yeah. That with me, there were so many of them that were paying attention. There were so many that were doing what they were asked. Beautiful. And I, I, I hear it. I see it. Beautiful. Right. So yeah. Thank, uh, so thank Mr. Unworth. Thank unworthiness. And then, um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you unworthiness for that. Yeah. And now we'll, we'll go to, we'll go to shame. Just, just tune in with shame. See what's present for him. Hey, shame. What happened? What's, what's happening for you? What's present for you right now? Yeah, you know, hearing sadness and unworthy talk, I really realized that I was riding along with them. I was feeling like I had not done a good job, that I had accepted these awards in the past and opportunities and documentaries and I still can't even do the work. I felt like I'm a, a fraud. <laughs> like, <laughs> how ashamed are you that you can't even get a group of students to stop talking? You, you, who are you? And I think I felt, I was feeling that. I was feeling, but after hearing Unworthy speak, I think I was projecting too much expectation on myself as a, it's what I was there to do. As if I was there to transform 100% of those lives in the moment. Like I have the best words and I have the best activity. Like I have, like, I, I think I just, mm. yeah, I, I heard what Unworthy said and I'm, and I felt it. I felt it too. And I, mm. and I carried it into the room too. Mm. But I'm feeling better now. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, is there anything nice and just coming back to higher self and just going super slow? Nice. Yeah, just tuning to so just tuning. In. Is there anything that higher self would like to offer? Sadness. Yeah, sadness. Is there anything you need right now? Shame. Is there anything that you? How are you feeling now? Well, from the place of shame, I um. I'm not ashamed of what I did yesterday. I'm, mm. not, I'm actually not. I wasn't. Mm. I gave my best. I did. I gave 100%. I, I, I stood there and held space for those students. Mm. I'm not ashamed of what I did. I actually, I was more just feeling like I wanted more. I wanted to do more. It wasn't that I didn't do enough. And so I feel, I feel complete that I'm not ashamed of the work I did yesterday. I'm actually really proud of the work I did yesterday. Beautiful, beautiful. And so now, now we're going to complete. So, um, yeah, just like acknowledge unworthiness, shame, sadness, just like, and just like, sell, I love you. You're welcome here. Thanks for speaking up. Just like give them these words of, of validation and encouragement. Sadness, shame, unworthiness. So proud of you. Thank you. Thank you for doing that work. Thank you for allowing yourself to be heard mm. and not hiding away. Mm. I think this morning you were hiding away. You were, <laughs> you were, you were hiding away, and you were analyzing so much. <laughs> you, you were, you were, you were, you were hiding away. I couldn't get to you. So I thank you for coming out and letting me have this talk with you. You are so important. You, you are so important to this journey of our work. 
you're so enjoying important of this mission of a million people that you're going to be able to serve and like that's not a billion that's not a billion you're not trying to serve every individual person <laughs> on the planet you just got a goal and focus on that I'm so proud of you i love you i appreciate you i need you i need you to be let me know when i'm not focused let me know when i'm missing something but thank you oh. ah, beautiful just now so just before we complete nice deep breath in deep breath in deep breath out <sighs> Cool. And just as one final closing piece, um, higher self now speaking to you as your entirety. Um, yeah. What do you what do you want to acknowledge? What does higher self acknowledge you for? And maybe like Ashanti, Ashanti, I, I acknowledge you for mm, Ashanti. I acknowledge you for having a big heart, a big goal, and desiring to serve all. So willing, glad that you're willing to acknowledge your limitations. It doesn't stop you from having a big heart. It just means that you don't weigh so much on your heart that you're not enough because of whatever the external stuff happens. I'm so proud of you for continuing to give 100% to the community, to your youth, to the youth you don't even know, you may never meet again, but keep giving it. Keep giving room for yourself to feel those things and that need to be felt because they're human things. You were taught when you're little, don't show them, but you're not that little boy anymore. Stand from that place. Mm. You're going to change the world. I love you. Breathe that in, brother. Take your time. Breathe that in. Yeah, in your own time. Wow. In your own time, bring it back when you're ready. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Brother, thank you. Mm. Thank you, thank you. Mm. I needed that. I, I more than you can. I don't I, more than you can probably imagine. Mm. I appreciate you for making time for letting us go over a little bit of time. I appreciate you. I, I needed that. Oh, <laughs> oh, I needed that. I needed that nah. so much. Oh, nice, man. nice, and just yeah. Even in this moment, just continuing to go slow, and I just love to reflect a, a couple of things. Um, yeah. Yeah, brother, amazing work, man. Okay, like amazing work. Your capacity to distinguish, to feel, to like give each part like its its own like really like space. And I could just feel how you're really bringing your heart and compassion for each of these parts of you, almost like they're little like they're kids. You know, just being like have have space. So really beautiful, like really beautifully done, man. And just like allowing the, the, the fullness of your emotionality to like come through. I could just, I could just, yeah, there was so much like healing and resolving and completing that was like happening all in there. And to complete with like that acknowledgement, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, higher self is in touch with, with his purpose and, and like your capacity to receive acknowledgement, like and breathe that in. Beautiful, like beautiful somatic work, my man. So, yeah, there's so much richness in what you just did. And just like thank you for your willingness and vulnerability to like lean in, to be held in this way and even in a public way. Just so much magic here, man. Like this is the work and the embodiment of what it is to oh, be the healthy masculine being the change. Like yeah. this, is, this is it. We need it. I need it. We need it. I and I know I'm, I'm going to do more work on this one because I think I I know as I'm talking this out, as I was talking this out, I realized anger was in there, and and I and I hide away from anger a lot. So I know that he, <laughs> yeah, I know I got to do some. I'm going to do some work on that tonight. That place of like, oh yeah, I was feeling that. Oh, I'm, I'm ex <laughs> You have uh, you've given me a gift today. I just want to tell you that. Like, I want you to know that. Um, Hmm. That I am uh 
I'm grateful. Yeah. I'm grateful. I am. Um, I appreciate you. I didn't expect this. Didn't know this was happening. Planned it. It wasn't planned for sure. Yeah, um, <laughs> but I am. Uh, I am truly grateful. And uh, yeah, I, I hope that those that are listening. I mean, I don't want to forget that I was on a, a leading a podcast here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was forgot that I was on a, Oh my goodness. Um let me just say uh I hope anyone who witnessed this, I hope you've got something. Mm. And I hope you got something for you through the things that you need to tap into. And I'm gonna Jamin, will you let folks know how they can reach you? I I I think there's so many people who could benefit from the work that you're doing. Whether whether they can climb a mountain or run a marathon, I don't know if that's the only ways to do this work. But I know that what <laughs> you've just what you've just showed me here, and I know that the people who are listening are going to get something out of this in such a beautiful way. So I appreciate you and I thank you. Yeah, more than words can tell you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we're saving all of that. Ashanti, and thank you, brother. And like, as I've said, really honoring your capacity to lean in to the tender edges of being human um, and also the vulnerability that comes with, like, yeah, opening in the space of, like, two masculine brothers, like, doing this. So there's a lot I celebrate here, and I receive your acknowledgement, man. Thank you. Thank you. Jamin, tell folks how they can find you. What ways do you want them to find you and what the work that you're doing? If somebody wants to work with you, they were inspired. Like I, like, please let, let us know. We'll put it all in the show notes, but let them know how they can follow your work. Yeah. Find you. Beautiful. Thank you for that invitation, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if people, people are curious to, to get in touch or just follow, follow along. Yeah. So Instagram, there are two channels. So you can get, get me personally at Jamin Heppel. That's at J A M I N Heppel, H E P P E L L. Uh, otherwise, my company, where we do a lot of our transformational work, is at Mountains and Marathons, at Mountains and Marathons. Um, and otherwise, uh, if you just want to hit me up on email, you can get me, jamin at mountainsandmarathons.world. Any of those platforms or channels will work perfectly. We will link all of that in the show notes. And please, thank you. Thank you. Uh, folks. Uh, Jamie and I, we should our mask here publicly. You don't have to do it publicly. You can go and make a mask online, millionmask.org. Tell somebody about this episode. I, I don't know how, if you have, I, I, I was fully in the experience. So I'm hoping you felt it like I felt it. I am, I'm, um, I'm, 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 I'm riding on some adrenaline right now in this moment of just feeling really seen and heard and, and, uh, and, uh, and I appreciate you. Um, so I want to, I'm going to be thanking you probably for many times the rest of this week, sending you messages, but I thank you. And folks, thank you for listening to the Taking Off the Mask podcast. We couldn't do this without you. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for listening. Jamin, thank you, brother. I really appreciate you. Yeah, appreciate really you. Appreciate you. Thank you, brother. <sighs> See you, folks. Take a deep breath. The Taking Off the Mask podcast is produced by Ryan Louie and graphics by Kelly Wong. Guests are managed by Dan Paloma and the podcast is edited by Samuel Matingo. We'd like to thank everyone who's been a part of the creation of this podcast. And for every guest that has been a part of the show, you are now a part of the Taking Off the Mask family. The Taking Off the Mask podcast is brought to you by the Ever Forward Club. And if you like what you've heard today, please subscribe, write a five-star review, and share this with someone. We look forward to having more conversations that matter. And please remember, there is more to you than anybody can see by just looking at you.